Hello, third grade friends. This is Miss Lewis, number two, coming at you with your reading lesson for Friday, May 1st. What we are going to work on today is we are going to look at two passages from your learning packet that you had this week. The first one being world celebrations and the second one being petroglyphs. Now, when we start with world celebrations, we are not going to reread the whole article because earlier this week, you already did that with Ms. Tingler. Instead, what we are going to do is we're going to quickly review the celebrations that you learned about from all over the world. And then we're gonna pick two celebrations and we're gonna take those two celebrations and we're going to compare and contrast them. Now compare and contrast, those are big words, aren't they? Very big words. And you might be thinking, Ms. Lewis, I don't remember what those words mean. Well, don't worry, because when we get to that part, I'm going to help you remember what compare and contrast mean and how to remember it. So here we go. First thing I'm going to do is share my screen with you. And so this might take just a minute for our article to pop up. So as you can see, I can see what you are seeing right now. So what we're going to do is quickly look at world of celebrations. And like I said, you already read this with Ms. Tingler, so we're not gonna take the time to reread, but instead we're just gonna dig through our text. We're going to look for that text evidence of finding some different celebrations that you read about. Now, when you start reading, the first paragraph is just an introduction about celebrating. And you know celebrating because you might have made that connection with when you celebrate different holidays or your own birthday or even someone in your family's birthday. So, when our first, our very first celebration that we learned about is the Coconut Festival in Kauai. Now, when I first read this, I thought, really? A festival all about coconuts? That seems very interesting. And I love reading about how they take every part of a coconut tree and use it for something in the festival, whether it was using the leaves for clothing or racing to the top of a coconut tree or even cooking the different parts of the coconut. I thought that was really cool. The second festival or celebration that you learned about is one that occurs on the Ivory Coast in Africa. Africa is so far away from where we are right now. We are in America, we're in North America, and Africa is all the way across the world. And the celebration that you read about from the Ivory Coast is the Festival of Masks. And you read about how villagers will make different kinds of masks. Some will look like animals. Some might even be a little scary. And you also read how the people get so excited when they hear the music from the drums beating. Can't you hear that in your mind? The beating of the drums and dancing. When I think of celebrations, I definitely think dancing is a great way to celebrate. All right, and one of the other celebrations you learned about was May Day. May Day was all about springtime coming, and we can probably make a great connection with this festival simply because it is springtime where we are right now. The people for May Day, when May Day comes around, they use flowers and they have the decorative ribbons and they put up a giant pole and they weave the ribbons all around. It sounds like it's gorgeous. I can close my eyes and visualize in my mind exactly those colorful ribbons going around a pole. Mm, I love it. And the last festival or celebration that you read about was the water festival. Now I thought this sounded really fun as it's all about playing with water and knowing that pretty soon it's going to be warm enough for us to go outside and throw water balloons or go swimming in the pool. This just really stuck out in my mind, especially because they can shoot water guns at their friends. Doesn't that sound awesome? And they soak their neighbors with the garden hoses. That sounds like so much fun, doesn't it? 
our very last paragraph of this article was just reminding you that there are different celebrations all over the world for different things right and you even went through and you worked on a few questions and we're not going to review those questions because you've already done that but what our focus is is we're going to look at the writing prompt right so i'm going to switch to a different page real quick let's see i'm going to have to make this a little bit smaller this is all brand new to me using all of this technology. And we are going to, oh no, having a problem loading. Well, that's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> well, let's just read through our writing prompts and then I'll get our page that we need loaded back up. So when we look at this writing prompt, it says, you have just learned about the celebrations of people around the world. Write a brief essay comparing and contrasting the different celebrations featured in this article. Now there's those two words again, compare and contrast. And I told you a few minutes ago that when we get to the part where we will be comparing and contrasting, I'm going to remind you what they mean and how to remember them. Are you ready? When we compare items, any two items, we are looking for what is alike with those items. So for example, I have a blue pencil and a purple pen. If I want to compare these things, I'm gonna look for things that are the same about them. So just looking at these two things, I think one similarity that sticks out is the fact that you can write with both of them. Don't you agree? You can write with a pen and you can write with a pencil. Now, when we contrast two things, we'll just use our same items again. You look for what is different with those items. So, looking at these two things, these two items, a pen and a pencil, what is different about them? Well, one's purple, one's blue. You can erase the pencil when you write with it, but you cannot erase the pen. So don't you see how we were able to take these two items and see what was alike and what was different? Yes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna show you two movements to help you remember what compare and contrast mean. So if you remember, when we did compare, we're gonna hold our hands up just like this. Go ahead and hold your hands up. Do you see how both of my hands are facing down? When we compare two items, we see what is alike. Just like my hands are doing the same thing, they're facing the same way, we're going to look to see what is alike about those items, just like with the pen and the pencil. Now when we compare, what did I just do with my hand? I flipped it over. They're no longer facing the same direction, are they? Now they are different. They are different. So when we contrast objects, we are looking for what is different. This hand is facing up. This hand is facing down. So when we compare, we look for items that are alike. When we contrast, we look for what is different. Let's do that one more time. Compare means alike. Contrast means they're different. That's right, excellent. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a page that did not want to load for us a moment ago. So what I'm going to do is I have to pull it up all the way from where I saved it on Google Drive. I'm excited, I'm very excited to share this with you because we're going to work on this writing prompt together. And I don't want you to be worried when you have a writing prompt. Sometimes when we see that we have to write about a topic or an article, it can make us feel a little nervous because, well, what, what exactly should we write about? Well, we're gonna look at our prompt. We're gonna pull the key pieces out 
and then that's how we're going to start writing. So don't worry, I'm going to help you through it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our writing up and ready. I'm sorry, this is so silly. I don't know why it just did not come up and stay up like it was supposed to. So we are going to be choosing two different celebrations to write about today because we are comparing and contrasting. So let's look back at, let's look back at our article very quickly. And I'm going to reshare my screen with, it, with you so you can see what I see. Okay, while this is loading, let's practice compare and contrast one more time. When we compare, we are looking for something that is alike. When we contrast, we're looking for what is different, okay? So the first thing that we are going to do is we're just gonna reread our writing prompt one more time. And it says, writing prompt, you have just learned about the celebrations of people around the world. Oh no, what is happening? Write a brief essay comparing and contrasting the different celebrations featured in this article. So if you look, here's our word comparing and contrasting. So we're going to compare and contrast different celebrations. Well, hmm, did we read about one celebration or many celebrations? Right, we read about several, didn't we? So in my mind, I'm gonna go back to my article and I'm just gonna pull out the celebrations that we read about and I've got them listed right here. We read about the Coconut Festival the Festival of Masks, May Day, and the Water Festival. So we learned about four different celebrations. Now when we are writing today, we're not going to take all four and compare and contrast them because that would take so long, wouldn't it? So what we are going to do is we're going to take two of these celebrations that we have learned about and we're going to do some comparing and contrasting. So, once again, what does it mean to compare and contrast? Compare means alike, contrast means they're different. Excellent. So, what I did is I made a quick chart. This is called a Venn diagram. And what it is, as you can see, it's just two circles beside each other, but there's a part in the middle that both circles share. So, the two celebrations that I chose to write about are celebrations in Hawaii and celebrations in the Ivory Coast. Now, you may have chosen to write about two different celebrations, and that is fine. This is just an example that I'm going to share with you. So, when we look at the Venn diagram that I made, First, let's look at celebrations in Hawaii. Well, I had to go back to my article and just review what I learned about Hawaii and the celebrations that occur there. And the one that we read about was the Coconut Festival. And one fun fact that we read about was that the people sometimes have races to climb up the coconut tree. Do you think you would beat your best friend climbing up a coconut tree? Mm, that might be something to try. The other celebration that I chose was celebrations in the Ivory Coast. And I just wrote down a few things that the article shared with us, making masks and huge drums making music, right? So, so far, what I have done is I have written two facts about these celebrations that are totally different. So I am contrasting them right? Well, let's look in the middle. In the middle 
is of the circles is where we look at what is the same? What is the similarity between these two things? Remember before when we did the pen and the pencil and we talked about what was the same and what was different? So with these two celebrations, one thing that is the same is that people dance at both of these celebrations. So even though these two celebrations happen in completely different parts of the world, you can look back and see that the author wants you to remember that there are some things that are the same. And one thing being people dance in both celebrations. That's a fun thing to remember, isn't it? So in our writing, what was our goal when we were writing? Do you remember? Let's revisit our prompt. You have just learned about the celebrations of people around the world. Write a brief essay comparing and contrasting the different celebrations featured in this article. So we reviewed the names of the celebrations, and we went through with our Venn diagram and we compared and contrasted them, didn't we? So now all that's left for us to do is pull the information that we put in our Venn diagram in those circles and we're just going to formulate, which means create, we're going to create sentences and turn those sentences into an essay. So Miss Lewis has an example that I would like to share with you. And I put my title at the top. The title is very important when you are writing. My title is World Celebrations. There are many ways people celebrate around the world. One type of celebration is the Coconut Festival in Hawaii. The whole celebration is around coconuts. There are races to see who can climb a coconut tree first. Kids paint coconuts and kids play ball with them. All very fun facts. My next paragraph states, another festival comes from the Ivory Coast in Africa. The villagers celebrate by making masks. They also dance to music made by drums. Both of these festivals are very different. And that's true, right? When we made our Venn diagram, we noted the things that were different about them. Both of these festivals are very different. However, the author states that during both celebrations, people dance. So that is what is the same about our two celebrations. This fact shows us as readers that there can also be parts of a festival that are similar. Now, this is just a quick example from Miss Lewis comparing and contrasting celebrations in the world. You may have already chosen two other celebrations to write about, and that's fine. I want to know what celebrations you already chose to write about. I want you to comment down below in the comment box and tell Miss Lewis the two celebrations that you decided to write about, okay? Awesome. All right, what we are going to do next is we are going to go over to our next article that was in our packet. And that article is, here we go. That article, the title is Petroglyphs. Oh, that's a new word, isn't it? Petroglyphs. Let's make sure you can see what I see. There we go. Petroglyphs. Now you might be thinking, petroglyphs? I I don't know what that is. And you know what? That's okay. Sometimes we have to read through our article and look at context clues to figure out what something is that we're reading about. So what we are going to do first is not that. Let's go back to our article and let's just start reading about that. Suppose that you have a great story to write, 
but you have no paper or pencil. How would you save your story? Hmm. Think about that for a minute. Something that has happened to you today that you are so excited about and you want to write it down to share with people, but you don't have paper or a pencil. How are you going to communicate with people your message? Let's keep reading. Thousands of years ago, people scratched pictures on rocks to tell their history. Hmm. They would show what they did every day. They would draw pictures of their families and their favorite animals. So looking at our text so far, we can see that this wasn't something that happens now, is it? When you do activities at school, or if you're writing about something that happened to you, or even earlier when we were doing a writing prompt, did Miss Lewis get a rock and carve all of our words into it? No. We use pencils and papers or pens and paper now, don't we? They would draw pictures to tell stories about their adventures and the places they had visited. Petroglyphs are found all over the world. Some are clear and easy to see. Others have almost disappeared because the weather has caused the rocks to erode. Some people damage petroglyphs by touching them or writing on them. Hmm, what do you think about that? I can just imagine that if I found a petroglyph carved into a rock, I would definitely want to be up close and want to touch it, wouldn't you? But the author has just told us that that can damage it. Sometimes petroglyphs are destroyed when roads or buildings are built. Hmm. They're destroyed. How would they be destroyed when a building or a road is built? Hmm. How would that happen? Oh, that's right. Because they have to carve out through the rock a place to put the road or the building that they're making, right? And so if there's a petroglyph already embedded on that rock, embedded means written down. If it's already written on that rock and they move it to make a road or a building, it's not going to be there anymore, is it? It could be broken and lost forever. We need to be sure that petroglyphs are protected. They tell us the history of people who lived long ago. So, let's take a look at this writing prompt. We're not going to do another writing, but let's just discuss. It says, think about what you learned about petroglyphs. Write a brief summary of the key ideas and details of this article. So, key ideas and details, that reminds me of main idea. Main idea is what a text is all about. Do your arms with me. The main idea is what the text is all about. Good job. So what was this text all about? Let's go back to the top and see. Was it about not having paper or pencil? Hmm. Is that what the whole article was about? No. Thousands of years ago, people scratched pictures on rock to tell their story. Hmm. People scratched pictures on rocks. Is that what this article is all about? Yes, it is. It is. And those pictures that are on the rocks are called, that's right, petroglyphs. So why would the author write an article like this for us to read. What do you think the author wants us to know from this article, wants us to learn? I'm going to be looking back closer to the end of our, our article where it says sometimes people damage petroglyphs by touching them or writing on them. And sometimes petroglyphs are destroyed when roads or buildings are built. We need to be sure that petroglyphs are protected. They tell us the history of people who lived long ago. Now, 
Look at this final sentence in our article. They tell us the history of people who lived long ago. Do you remember how long ago from the beginning of the article? That's right, thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago, probably before there was even a written language for people to write down. They were carving these pictures and these words, not necessarily words, but just pictures to tell their stories. And if these petroglyphs are destroyed or lost forever, whether it's from people touching them or the weather destroying them over time, we're not going to know different things that happened long ago because that history will be erased. It'll be gone and we won't know. So what we are going to do now is we're going to do a writing lesson. Oh, Miss Lewis, you said we weren't writing today. Well, it's not that kind of writing lesson. I wanna show you something real quick. Look at this. We are going to be writing with our own kind, our own style of petroglyphs. What do you see on the page right now? I bet you got excited when you saw all of these emojis. Do you ever type a text or an email to somebody and use the emojis to show how you're feeling? I do too. I love to use emojis. They tell a story just like the petroglyphs told a story from long ago. And so these are just a fun little example of some songs, some Disney songs from some of our favorite Disney movies. So let's take a look at these real quick and then I'm going to issue you a challenge. Are you ready? Now, one that I thought was so fun was this second one right here. I can't highlight it, but it has the heart, the arrow, the two hands, and a door. Hmm. What could these emojis be trying to tell us? We have heart, arrow, hands, and door. What do you think of when you see a heart? Hmm. I know. Love. Do you think of love when you see a heart? I do too. Now the arrow, it's pointing to a direction. Maybe we need to follow the arrow. And look at these hands. The hands are open. So love, open, door. I know. Love is an open door. Do you remember that song from Frozen? Love is an open door. Don't judge me. Let's look at, let's look at another one. You'll probably get this one very quickly. Look at the last one. We have a hammer, a snowman, and a question mark. Now, what does a hammer symbolize? Probably that we need to fix something, right? We need to put something together or fix it. And then a snowman and a question mark. Hmm. Hammer, snowman, question mark. I know. Do you want to build a snowman? See how these emojis are telling a story, or in this case, songs from some of your favorite movies? That's exactly what petroglyphs were used for. So what I want you to do is I want you to have some fun with some emojis. I want you to get a piece of paper and you can get a pen, a crayon, a pencil, anything you want. And I want to see if you can write a sentence or even name a song title of one of your favorite songs using just emojis. Now you don't have to use the emojis that you see on this screen. You can use any emoji that you want to, and you know what? You can even make your own emojis. I think that would be really fun too. So I want you to be thinking about how you could use emojis to tell your own story, to write your own sentence, just like people from long ago used petroglyphs or the pictures on a rock 
to tell their story. I want you to comment down below some of the different emojis you could use to make a sentence or a song title or song lyrics. Show me with just emojis if you can, okay? All right, friends. I am so glad that we got to be together today. I wish with all my heart that we could be in the classroom together right now, but I hope that you are having fun at home. I hope that you are happy and safe, and I sure hope that we can see each other soon. Okay, so Ms. Lewis is going to leave now, and I can't wait to look at the comments and see your emoji writings. Okay, I will see you later. Bye, friends.